Buddhism and true religion. A real message from God. But reason is something with which Allah has endowed every human being. And we use this reason in our daily life, all of us. So we use reason all the time. He grew up here where he completed his elementary and secondary school. In addition to the modern school system, he studied Quran in traditional Quranic schools. He also studied fiqh, hadith, and the Arabic language under traditional teachers in the city, and he studied Aqidah with Ansar al-Sunnah group. After he joined the University of Khartoum, where he completed his education, he traveled to London for his postgraduate studies. He obtained his PhD from the University of Khartoum and the University of London in 1970. The topic of his PhD thesis was the concept of the casualty in Islam. His professional teaching and experiences include, and the list is long, so I'll only name a few. He has served as the chairman of the founding council of the American Open University. He is a professor of Islamic studies departments of Aqidah, Dawah and Information at the Imam Muhammad ibn Saud Islamic University in Saudi Arabia. He has lectured at many universities, academic institutes, and Islamic centers in many parts of the Islamic and Western worlds, and he has also participated with research at many different conferences around the world. There are many published and unpublished articles, papers, and pamphlets in Arabic and English of Dr. Jafar Idris. Some of the published English ones are, and I'll only name a few, Islamic Social Science, The Islamic Way of Developing Nations of the Sciences, Its Philosophy and Methodology, The Attributes of God, and Islamic Point of View. There are also many articles in different magazines, as well as papers presented in many Islamic conferences, but they, however, were not published. Dr. Jafar Adris speaking on the subject of reason and the true religion. Dr. Jafar Idris. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shiroori anfusina wa sayyati a'malina man yahdillahu fa huwa al-muhtad wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliyya murshida thumma amma ba'd. My talk today is about uh, reason and true religion. By true religion, I mean, I mean a religion that is a real message from God uh, that was conveyed or revealed to a true prophet. And reason, I will explain the meaning of reason, inshallah. But reason is something with which Allah has endowed every human being. And we use this reason in our daily life, all of us, in our uh, relations, in, uh, when we do uh, uh, commerce, in our factories, in our... So we, re we use reason all the time. So it is uh, impossible for a God who endowed us with that reason to give us a religion that is not compatible with it. Because we use this reason in our daily life to judge whether something is true or false, whether something is good or bad. This is the, the, this is the criterion by which we judge things. So if the religion he uh, reveals to uh, his prophets was not compatible with reason, then we would say it is false. This, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. But uh, we must be clear about what reason means. It is not just an idea that occurs to you, hmm, where that you say this is, uh, this is the rational thing, 
or it is not just an, an idea, it is not uh, just your whims. Reason, uh, I give you some of the characteristics of rational people. And uh, the, 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 the characteristic or the standards by which rational people judge matters. And you will find in, when you read the Quran that these are the standards by which the Quran itself judges whether something is true or false, uh, good or bad. The first criterion is that of uh, consistency. By consistency, I mean that uh, if someone makes two statements that are contradictory, he says something is the case, something is not the case, uh, people usually do not uh, make uh, these statements just one after the other. Because that is very clear that uh, no one says, I came, but I didn't come. Hmm? But uh, people can make, uh, 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 contradict themselves when you start by saying something, then you say some other things, then you forget what you said at the beginning, and you make a statement that contradicts the first one. Someone comes and tells you, well, the, the, this second statement contradicts the first one. And if you are honest, you would say, yes, uh, I confess uh, this is a contradiction, so this cannot be accepted. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us that one of the tests that you should use to judge whether something is from Allah or not, to look for contradictions. If there are any contradictions, then this means that this is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Quran, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Had this Quran been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have found many contradictions therein. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only saying that there are no contradictions in the Quran, but he's saying that no book the size of the Quran, no book that tells you about what the Quran uh, tells you, no book that has been revealed in the course of 23 years uh, will be uh, immune from contradictions if it were made by a human being. So the fact that the Quran, there are no contradictions in the Quran is itself the proof that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, a rational person accepts the testimony of, uh, of senses. A rational person would not say, see something, but say, no, I don't accept that, that fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took to task some people um, whom he said would do uh, things like this. وَلَوْ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ كِتَابًا فِي قِرْطَاسٍ فَلَمَسُوهُ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ لَقَالِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُّبِينٌ yeah. uh, Even if we, these people are irrational, because if, even if we sent down from the sky a Qur'an in something physical, huh? and they touch it by their own hands, they would say that this is magic. So this means that they don't accept the testimony of, of the senses. We accept the testimony of the senses, and that is why we go by the testimony of the senses in deciding whether this is Fajr, whether now it's uh, time for Maghrib. Also, a rational person accepts a logical conclusion. If you say, this is premise one, this is premise two, and these two or three lead to a conclusion, then a rational person accepts the conclusion. When some uh, people said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they denied the Quran, and the reason for that was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sent any book to anyone. 
And these people were Jewish. So the Quran said, then who sent the book to Moses? You see, this is a contradiction. If you say that God sent a book to Moses, then you cannot say Allah never sends any book to anyone. And there are many arguments in the Quran uh, like this. Also, rational person, and we in our lives do this. We judge similar things similarly. Similar things similarly. This is only, if, even children can, can know this. If children are examined, sit for an examination, and uh, two or three of them uh, give the same answer, but one is given a prize and the two are not, they would come to the teacher and say, well, my answer is just like the one whom you gave the prize. Why don't you give me a prize also? See, this is something, this is, this is reason. This is something with which Allah endowed someone. And it is on the basis of this that what we call ijtihad is made. A happy marriage is not about a wedding license. It is not about a great wedding night. Yasser Fazaga. A happy marriage is not when two people get married to be happy. A truly happy marriage is when two people get married to make each other happy. To know more, please join us in our program Before You Say I Do. Join Yasser Fazaga in Before You Say I Do every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Really? Husband wants to keep divorce. Solution or problem? Joint family system. Heaven or hell? Big fat demons have become the norm. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half today at 7 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Peace TV presents 100 million viewers. More than 30 dynamic dyes. Their aim? If indeed you love Allah, to live like Muslims. So don't drop the baton. Their vision? Something about Iman, something about faith. May Allah save us from the hellfire. Ask Allah for protection and peace. Their mission. Oh Allah, I turn to you and you alone. Stand up and passionately strive. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. We are a community that stands up for justice. Establishing justice and peace. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Meet the personalities. Lighting the new light to remove falsehood and to prevail the truth in Peacemakers. Every Friday to Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 9.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. What is ijtihad? We, some, we see a judgment in the Quran that this should be forbidden. Then we find something that is the same as the things or has the same effect of the things that Allah said haram. So we judge this to be haram even if that particular thing is not mentioned in the Quran. When Allah says about khamr, khamr is forbidden. 
Why is it forbidden? Because it intoxicates. Now we find something that is not that we don't drink, something that we swallow, or something that uh, we give in, is given as, in, as an injection or so, but it has the same result. It intoxicates. So we say that this is haram. Why? This is based on the rational uh, principle that similar things are treated similarly. And uh, this, this kind of argument is used in the Quran in many, in many verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the people at the time of the Prophet to see what happened to the people before them. Why, why do we read history? Well, what benefit do we get from studying history? Because similar things are treated similarly. If you do the same thing that uh, some earlier people did, then we must expect the same result as they had. That's why the Quran says, Akufarukum khayrum min ulaikum. Are your kuffar better than uh, those kuffar before them? If this happened to the earlier kuffar, it will happen also uh, to you as kuffar. Also, moral arguments. A rational person accepts moral arguments. One of the uh, moral principles is that a person should not say something and do something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this, describes this as a person like this as being irrational, a person who has no senses. Do you tell people to do good and forget it, to do it yourself while you are reading Al-Quran, the Kitab? Don't you have any sense? You see, no one who has sense, who reasons, will act like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafa'aloon? Why do you say what you don't do? This is indeed hateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are some of the examples. We find, and unfortunately, that many Muslims have been um, influenced by people of other religions in uh, thinking that there is a problem or there's a, there's a contradiction between reason and revelation. And they, they think that uh, you should not judge revelation by reason, or that uh, there can be something that is not rationally acceptable in religion. And they say that you must accept it on faith. You see, our faith is not incompatible with our reason. That's why and I looked into the Quran for so many years and collected all the verses in which the word aql, you see the word aql is the word that is used in the Quran for different senses of reason. It is sometimes used in the sense of understanding, sometimes used in the sense of uh, judging rightly, sometimes used as uh, the examples which I have just saw. So the word aql, and I, I looked into the Quran I found that no word in the Quran is it mentioned that someone deviated because he followed his reason. In fact, the Quran describes those who don't believe as irrational. La yaqilun. Always in the Quran, the irrational are acquainted with people who have no faith. Um, and again, I don't want to go into the details. When you read the Quran, inshallah, you uh, uh, pay attention to this. Look for the word. Don't just depend on the translation. Because sometimes translate the same word in different, they give the, the, the same Quranic word by different words according to what they think is the context. And that does not help you to see the relationship between these two verses. 
So it will help you, even if you don't understand Arabic, to see what Arabic word is used. And then you can see that the relationship between these uh, many verses, that the word aql uh, is used here, ya'qilun is used there, and so on, irrespective of what translation. So I found um, no verse in the Quran which says that someone deviated because he followed uh, his aql or his reason. Now, many religions, uh, this is this is perhaps the best um, evidence that there is no uh, there is no contradiction between Islam and reason. Many religions and even some ideologies, uh, which are non-religious, ask you to start by accepting uh, by accepting uh, the the foundation of that religion. And if you say why, they tell you, well, this is the religion. This is something that has to be accepted on faith. In the, in, the, in the Quran, it is not like this. In the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, the fundamentals that the Quran gives us reason and evidence, rational arguments and evidence for the truth of the fundamentals of the religion. But it doesn't do that with what is based on that, uh, on, that, on that faith. Because if you accept the fact that the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you accept the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing, and that he is merciful, then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you not to eat pork, then you don't need to know why I should not eat pork. Because you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, the Quran gives you uh, reasons, rational arguments for accepting first that there is a creator. If someone says, I am an atheist, I don't believe in God, the Quran gives him an argument for the existence of the creator. If someone says, yes, I believe that uh, there is a creator, but uh, I don't know why he alone should be worshipped. Why don't I worship some other minor gods? The Quran gives him reason why he, uh, he should not do this. Um, the Quran gives reasons why should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the attributes that, uh, that the Quran uh, imputes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why he cannot have some of the attributes that uh, some people say. For example, why shouldn't Allah have children? You see, it is not only, by the way, the Christians who say that uh, Jesus is the son of, uh, of, of God. Even the Arabs, uh, before the Prophet وسلم, many of them used to believe that the angels are the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this cannot be the case. And, and it gives, uh, he gives many arguments for the truth of this. He says, for example, that the argument is like this. If you believe that Allah is the creator, then it is impossible for him to have, a, have children. Who are those children? If they are his creation, they are not his children. You cannot be a creator and a father at the same time. You don't create your child. So if it is your creation, it cannot be your child. Also, there is an ayah in the Quran which says, how, how can Allah have a child seeing that he has no spouse? A father does not give birth to the child. It is the mother who does that. And if you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no wife, then you cannot say he is a father. Now, some people, when we argue with them, but this is a, uh, you are taking the word um, father and child also in the literal sense. We don't take that in the literal sense. I say, okay, give me the non-literal sense. I will not judge you just by 
the words. I will judge you by the senses that you give to those words. And no one has, up till now, succeeded in giving us a meaning or a sense of the word child and father that is not really inconsistent with the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.